population that has our input and also has the cost uh, borne by the entire province rather than uh, lay the feet of this community. On the surface, it just seems like this nice, quiet town and things are moving along. But what you don't see is you don't see the torture. The fear about the future is tremendous. We just have this sense of uncertainty and we have this sense of being pushed to the back burner because it's really not convenient to deal with the magnitude of what's happened to our community because if you do that, you expose what happened here and you show the vulnerability of communities everywhere, then people will start to say, wait a minute, is the government in the business of protecting us or not? Well, right now, 24 million Canadians are connected to a central water system, but only 18 million of those are drinking disinfected water. And in rural communities, more than 8 million Canadians are on their own, depending on water from private wells, exposed to farm fields, environmental pollution, even their own sewage systems. I don't think anybody really is looking after the individual uh, rural water use. Or... Meanwhile, nasty things are still getting into the water. North Battleford, Cryptosperdium, a dangerous pathogen that chlorine won't kill. Beckwith, Ontario, trichloroethylene, an industrial chemical linked to cancer. Liberty, Saskatchewan, the byproduct of chlorine itself, dangerous chemicals called trihalomethane, also linked to cancer, formed when chlorine reacts with naturally occurring organic material. All of those things are a risk across the country, and there are other hazards. In this research lab in Saskatoon, scientists are testing for viruses in water, something Canada doesn't test for, doesn't even have standards for. War systems, no battles for and are happening as we speak, uh, because we, are, we simply don't know the extent uh, and the quality of the water that a lot of people are drinking. Experts say the laws are moving in the right direction. 